everyone, my name is Larry Rossen and I've had the pleasure of working for many years as ESPN's track and field and marathon commentator on the board of NSAF and we're delighted you're with us here today to learn from really a star who knows what she's talking about and I'm talking about Kendall Williams who is the former national high school record holder in the heptathlon and is a seven time NCAA heptathlon pentathlon champion and a 19, 19, listen to me, a 2016 Rio Olympic athlete for the United States and thank you for taking a few minutes. Of course. And let me just start by asking you if you could, how did you wind up in the heptathlon? You no doubt started with an individual event or two, correct? Yes, um, so I started running track when I was seven years old and I just had a couple of events, I think I did standing long jump, the 100 meters, um, and then that, that turned into the 200, 400, um, and then I think I picked up high jump at one time, and, um, and then when I got old enough to hurdle, I was hurdling, and then my dad looked up and said, okay, well, we've had experience with long jump hurdles uh, and high jump, so all I got to teach her how to do is throw the shot put and convince her to run the 800, because um, it was the pentathlon at the time when I was uh, 11 years old when I started doing the pentathlon, and then that snowballed into the heptathlon. Was dad involved with your coaching? Yes, he was my coach all the way up until college. So. Awesome. Now, did you right away start taking to the sport when it was first introduced to you, or did it grow on you? It had to grow on me because I wasn't really sure what it was, so uh, I didn't play really any sport. My brother was the athlete when we were younger, but it was a foot race that exposed um, I guess how, how quick I was um, against the boys. So I beat all the boys except for my brother. And so my parents realized that we needed to find a track program. But I thought that a track meet was a meeting that I was going to. And next thing you know, I'm, I have like sneakers like I'm about to run down the track. And I was like, what is happening? Um, was that when you were nine or how old were you? Then? Seven. That's when I was seven. seven. I was like, oh, we're going to a meeting. I had no idea like, that I was racing. Um, so, so that was fun. And I did like competing. And of course, you meet so many friends. And I got to try all these new things that I, I never knew um, even existed. And I was counted. So. Which of the field events, when you look back, do you think helped you as far as expanding your horizons to think of being a athlete? I would probably say high jump. I have a memory of. Um, when I was younger, kind of looking at the high jump and being interested because I would watch people practice, but I didn't know how it worked. Like, how did they get over the bar like that? But then when I finally figured out uh, how to do it, I was like, okay, well, I know that's a, a big event with big points in the, in the multi, so if I can be good at that, I, I have speed and, and I can jump and do the long jump. I've had experience with the hurdles. Now that I've put this high jump piece together, um, you know, in the pentathlon, if you have three really strong events, then you're going to be pretty successful. So. Kendall, when you look back on your experience, and obviously you're still growing into the sport at your age, but you've got lots of experience. When you start thinking of what you've accomplished, do you look back now at all these years and say, I should have practiced a little bit more in this event and that event, it would make me better today? And if so, as, as advice to coaches and the athletes, what would that be, if there is anything? I would say I wish I practiced more of my throwing events. Um, because I struggle with them still. That's still an area where uh, I have difficulty just because I developed a lot of bad habits early on and it's harder to learn the correct way when you, as you get older. So I think if I could go back in time, I would ask my dad to like, not have me skip the, the, the shot put practice, like make me go over there and throw it even though it's not my favorite event, um, but just like paying attention to the fine details and, uh, and yeah, just keeping it fun. You had a great coach in Petrus Kipriana, mm -hmm. uh, who really knows the event well and has really nurtured a lot of good heptathletes and decathletes. Uh, can you break down for our audience, in the course of a week, what percentage of the time is spent on hurdles and sprinting and on field events that require throw capability and jumps? Mm -hmm. Petros is um, an amazing coach, and I, I owe a lot of my success to him because when I got to college, he is very, um, good with technique and so I was able to, uh, he was able to break down my technique and build it back up again. So on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are our heavier days and that's when we do hurdle practice um, or sprints practice and then we'll go into a jump. So either if it's high jump on Monday, it'll be like long jump on Wednesday. Uh, and then after that we do our endurance running. Tuesday, Thursday we lift and that's when we throw. Um, so Tuesday might be shot put. Um, Thursday might be javelin. So when you have a Tuesday shot put, is the whole day given over to focus on technique and improving the shot? Yes. 
So after we live, so you get events specific each day. Every day, yeah. And so we'll usually practice two to three things a day, except for Tuesday, and Thursday, we'll just do um, our throwing events usually. So that way we can hone in on on the technique and have time to, to really spend on it. If you look back right now, uh, how are you going to change going forward in the future from what you looked? Have you honed or changed anything from that training program in the beginning? In other words, do you work more on weights now than you used to? Yes, I think now that uh, my technique in the events has gotten a little bit better, now we just add uh, strength. So my numbers in the weight room have gone up. That's important to, to Pedro's each year that he sees improvement in that area. But I'm still working on some things technically. Um, so. Yeah, that's, that's mainly the focus, just focusing on the delivery details. With all the obligations you had in, in college when you came in, hours of training and so forth, how did you break down your study habits to match and be able to manage your time so well to do training every single day for your entire four years at school? The universities are great because they really um, support the athletes with tutoring, mentoring, um, and so that kind of helps you because you have to be in, in those mandatory study halls or mandatory mentoring or tutoring sessions. So you finish practice um, and then I would usually do my assignments and homework after practice, um, like throughout the, the, the evening and then of course on the weekends unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's how I, I got it done and, and managed. How many hours a day did you commit to studying? Mm, I would say I guess it depends on the class, because when I was in my more major specific classes, um, it was more like group project based putting campaigns together since I was an advertising major, so that didn't work. we didn't have a whole lot of homework. That was my senior year, but freshman year, oh man, I, I would say yeah, four to five hours, um, depending okay. on your class load, yes, because you have um, four classes and depending on what you're taking, that can um, you know decide on how much homework you have. Well, we've had a chance here to learn from the very best, and we hope that the guidance that's being offered to you by the athletes as you continue to surf on our website is helpful to all of you, all of you coaches and individual athletes as well. We want to thank Kendall Williams, 2016 Rio Olympian and an NCAA champion many times over for joining us today. Thank you, Kendall. Thank you. <laughs>